It's summertime, you're getting ready for fall launch for your ministry, your church program. Maybe you have to name something. You gotta name a ministry, a program, an event, or you're thinking of going through a renaming of something. In this Word Made Digital tutorial, we're gonna talk about what's in a name. How do you name something well in your church ministry? Hello my friends, welcome to Word Made Digital Tutorials. I'm Joanna LaFleur. This tutorial is brought to you by Compassion Canada. We're talking about naming things today, that is how we connect people to transformational opportunities in the church. And actually that's what Compassion Canada is all about. They're about transformation through the local church for people living in extreme poverty. Later in this episode, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Compassion, a story of an amazing young person who grew up and is now an alumni of the program. But for now, we're talking about naming. What's in a name and how do you name something? Maybe you're going through a rebrand or you've got to name uh, youth events for the fall or, or just you're wanting to evaluate the names of things you already have. I want to give you a few tips today on how to think about how you name things in your church. The number one tip I want to give you is tell it clearly. Be clear, not just clever. I think a lot of the time we want to name something that sounds exciting and intriguing. We think, oh, if they have to ask more about it or it has a cool name, uh, they might want to come to it. But actually, the point of naming something is to be clear about what that thing is. So for example, if something is called Braveheart, and then every time someone says, what's Braveheart? You have to say, oh, that's our men's ministry then you've already taken a step of difficulty. If you were just clear from the beginning and called it men's ministry or men's Bible study or something like that, something clear and direct, then people wouldn't have to do that extra step of getting through the cleverness and the name to get to what it actually is. Remember, this is a conversation about hospitality. That's my next tip for you. We're thinking about how to be hospitable to people through what we name things. Once you're inside of a group, inside of a church, inside of a program, you don't really care what it's called. You're already there. You already like it. You're already involved. The naming of things primarily is for those outside to know how to get inside, those outside to be intrigued and want to connect into what you're up to. And so it doesn't really matter what your kids camp is called for people who are already involved, but if it's called, uh, you know, kids get away and you don't have in the name of it something about the kids camp, you're really clever maybe, but it's not clear to people. We want to be as clear as we can because it is an act of hospitality. The second thing I want you to think about when naming a program or a ministry is that spelling matters. I think we've all seen um, churches and ministries who try to use um, things that are hard to spell or things that are like a Greek word, a Hebrew word, something that kind of sounds cool and has deep meaning behind it, but nobody knows how to spell that. And if people don't know how to spell it, they may not know how to pronounce it, but more importantly, they can't Google it. Most people who are connecting as new people into your programs and activities are coming through some form of connection and Google search. So if people are looking for kids camps in your area, youth program, a women's Bible study, whatever it may be, they're Googling things. And, and if it's called a complicated Greek word, it's going to be really hard for people to find your ministry and your program. Even if they already know and are connected into it, it's hard if you don't know how to spell it. You might already be connected deeply into the ministry and you still forget how to spell it so you can't type in the domain name. Well, that leads me to my next tip is make sure you check out what other things use that word, name, or phrase on the internet. Because you might want to get the domain name, you might want to get the social media handle, but if other people have already used, you know, a, a great example is like a St. John's or St. Paul's, uh, those kinds of words, uh, of course, are, are used by a ton of churches and a ton of ministries around the world for good reason. They leave a legacy of the apostles. But it does mean it's going to be hard to get the Instagram handle or the name for it. So try to think of something that is clear to you. Maybe it's, um, you know, high school ministry at name of church or high school ministry your town or whatever it is. Um, if you can have the name clearly of what it is and then something that differentiates you so that it can be found on Google and also available on social media handles. It's great if you can have the same consistent handle across all platforms. 
without having to have the underscores, the dash, the dot, you know, the numbers at the end. You know, we've all seen those things. And so it's amazing if we can have the same thing across all platforms. And some of that is if we're researching a new name to call something, our whole church, if it's going through a rebrand, a ministry program, an event, it's awesome if we can find something that is unique to us and then we can be consistent around how we use it and just talk about it on the internet and on social media rather than people looking us up doing a quick google search they figured out how to spell it the name is clear or but now everybody else seems to have something of the same name so make sure you can be as unique as possible so that people can find you my next tip about naming things is think long term not trendy what I love about, as I reference about something like a St. John's or a St. Paul's or a high school ministry as opposed to uh, you know, earthquake youth or whatever, uh, is that they uh, last beyond trends. And especially when we're talking about things for young people, sometimes things that are trendy today are not going to be cool even just three, four, five years from now. And so if you don't want to constantly have to either be embarrassed about the name of something because it feels like it's kind of out of date or have to change the name and the branding of things all the time, it would be great if you tried to think of something that had a long shelf life. We can't anticipate everything that's gonna come up, but a long shelf life for your name over a trend or something that sounds really cool is going to serve you well and ultimately use less resources in your church. Hope these tips are helping you as you think through naming your church, your ministry, your program, your event, as you get ready for your next one, especially coming into the fall ministry season. A big shout out to Compassion Canada for making this tutorial possible. I said I would tell you a little story. Let me tell you a little bit about Rhea. Rhea is a woman from the Philippines and she came into a compassion program when she was a kid. And she has this profound quote that says, knowing someone sees you, that is changes you and it changed her life when she came into a program through her local church connected to compassion in order to come out of a position of like lack of education lack of health care lack of social activity and cultural things that would kind of enrich her life and give her a future in the world and so now Rhea is an alumni of the compassion program and she is an adult who now I love this sponsors a kid in the very community that she came out of herself. It's an amazing way to pay it forward generation after generation and we can be part of it. You can go to compassion.ca to learn more and to get involved in this kind of sponsorship that is transformative through a church, through a local community to change the lives of kids everywhere. Well, thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. We have new tutorials coming out every single week. So there's now an archive of tons. If you wanna check out more of our tutorials, you can go back in this YouTube archive, hit subscribe so that you don't miss one of these episodes that comes out. We wanna give you free resources and free content every single week to help you do what you do. Share not just good news, but the best news in the world. See you next time.